Okay, good afternoon. Hello everyone. Welcome to the race course for another press con well press morning rather than a press conference, but it is what it is. Um we're obviously here today with our new manager Dean, who's returned to the club. Um just go through the statement, you've probably all seen it, that Rex May FC are delighted to welcome Dean uh, back to the race course as first team manager. The appointment was ratified by the Wrexham Supporters Trust Board. Um and we're obviously here today to take some questions about that. So format's going to be, we're just going to go into some questions from the club, some questions for Dean and Dixie, and then we'll open it up. There's going to be no one-to-ones afterwards. If you uh, want to uh, ask any questions, go ahead and uh, put your hand up and I'll come around to you. Okay, so we'll start off with Ollie. Thanks. Uh, Dean, first and foremost, um, welcome back. Funny game of football, um, back to where it started in terms of your managerial career. Yeah, I think you just you just said it, summed it up. It's a funny game, as it's been said famously previously. It's uh, it's a great opportunity for myself to come back, um, and very similar to when I came in last time. We need to get the club back uh, back on the front foot and going forward and get us um, going back up the league. For you, what um, what was the draw for you to return to this football club? For me, I know what the club's about, and there's a lot been said from when I left previously. It's in the past, it's behind us. I can only go forward now, and I can only affect what's in front of us. And uh, as I said, we'd as soon as we can address the league position and get the club going forward in a more stable position. Yeah, the club's in a similar sort of position as your first tenure here, really, isn't it? And underperforming in the league at the moment, and being brought in as the man to uh, to lift that side. Yeah, as you said, um, <coughs> excuse me, when I came in previously, it was very similar. As I said, it's now what's happened in the past is in the past. Um, we've, got to, we've got to build on what's what's in place now and um, fill the lads full of confidence, get the lads motivated and get them out on the pitch doing, doing well for the football club. Dixie, obviously you headed the operation to employ a new manager. Without going into the nitty gritty of it, of course, would you like to talk us a bit through the how the decision was made, please? Um, well, obviously we had uh, probably 20 plus people apply for the vacancy. Uh, we narrowed that down to five people, uh, all of which were interviewed. Um, and believe it or not, at the time, Dean was the first one that we did interview. Um, and as I said, we, we spoke about it, for obvious reasons, spoke to other people besides that were there. Uh, and the overall consensus was that uh, we all thought it was best for Dean to come back to the football club. And your old role in that, how proud are you to have been asked to head up the operation to find a new manager? Well, I'm not, I wasn't as, as I'm aware of ahead of anything. Um, I'm the president of the football club, I certainly wasn't uh, head of um, employing somebody. Uh, initially there was three of us that did the interviews. Um, and then obviously we forwarded people onto the board uh, that we thought we'd down to these five. Uh, and the board made the decision after talking about each one of them uh, and it said they all agreed that Dean would be the right guy for the job. Thanks. Rob? Dixie, can I just ask about the, the calibre of the um, candidates that applied for the job as well, obviously, and what it was about Dean that made you go uh, to, in this direction? Um, obviously looking at what, obviously where the other people were, what their situation was as regard leaving the clubs that were at obviously some of them are, dare I say as Dean would know are assistant managers at other clubs etc etc um, but as I said we just looked at uh, what the players had done we know Dean obviously from before I think one of the great things that he said when he first sat down was and I have to say uh, I wasn't akin to this that he didn't really walk out on the football club the last time he was here he turned down Warsaw three times uh, in that period, he said he didn't want to go, uh, but in the end, I think he was probably pestered too much. Uh, and it, with it being a home, his hometown, I think he found it difficult to say no to them. Uh, he probably learned from his mistake by applying for the job back here again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I th like anything else, uh, uh, these things happen. But uh, as I said, he did a good job when he was here before, uh, and we hope he carries, carries that on in the future. Obviously, just looking out to, to my right, uh, Dean, you're straight back into it. And just done first impressions of the, of the current squad and, and what you've got to work with, really. Yeah, look, there's a <clears throat> you're looking at the squad from the outside. There's good players. There's good players. As I said, um, when you're down the bottom of the league, it's a question of maybe confidence. It affects everybody. And it's, as I said, it's a, a clean slate for them. The lads who find themselves not in the starting level at the moment or on the outside of the squad, 
it's up to them now to take a claim and get back in and impress myself and uh, set the opportunity to go and play for this football club. It's a great football club to be at. We're in the wrong position and need to address it. First impressions, I mean, do you think it's a better squad than what you had to work with in 2016 when you came in? Yeah, look, I don't want to be disrespectful to players or anything like that. It's, as I said, on paper, it's a very good squad. I had this conversation with the players, but you don't win football matches on paper. We have to address what's on the pitch. We have to be better. Um, address something first and foremost, conceding too many goals. And there's, what I do have this time is um, options that I can go and create and, and score goals. Just in terms of your assistance as well, uh, obviously Brian Flint's here at the moment present. Uh, just can you leave what, what, what the process will be now? Are you going to bring someone else in? Is Brian going to stay? What's, uh... Yeah, I brought Andy, Andy, Andy Davis just came back in with me regarding that. Yeah. And obviously, Brian Flynn, is he going to be remaining at the club? Or? Uh, Brian Flynn's left. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dean, is it fair to say that you've got unfinished business here at Wrexham? Yeah, look, as I said, I don't want to speak too much previously. Uh, I said about going back. I was given the club a couple of years ago. We built something. It, the club was a little bit disjointed. It was a lot of, not to say all the show, a bit rudderless. We stabilised it, regrouped, kept the club, club in the division, started building. And built from the back, it was about the second year, um, as I said, to add them better players around what was turned out to be a record-breaking back four, back five to say. Stabilised the club, it was laying the foundation and look, what's happened has happened. Um, the only thing I can say, if it wasn't my own town club and at that time, um, if it was someone of similar stature, I probably wouldn't have gone. I probably wouldn't have gone. The fact that it was my own town club, stood in the terraces, Played there numerous times to achieve things. It uh, was very much of a, a choice I made from heart of my head other than possibly what was my gut feeling. And as I said, was stated, the first approach it did turn down. And in terms of the objectives for this season, do you think the playoffs are still achievable? Look, without looking too far, um, I think we don't need to start running before we can walk. As I said, we just need to stabilise, stabilise ourselves, okay, uh, address um, tomorrow night first and foremost. It's a quick turnaround. I've met the players today. We've Got a few things into them this morning. Um, had a good, bright, short, short, sharp session with them, and uh, said all being well, we can get something tomorrow. Building block in place and some platform for us to go forward on. What would you say to the sort? Of, I mean, I think it's fair to say all, not all the fans are overly <laughs> pleased to see you back necessarily. I mean, how how do you go about winning those over? Look, it's for me. I've got to affect things first and foremost on the football pitch. As I said, there's a game tomorrow night. If I can get three points. It gives me a better stead to go forward. There'll be times, as I did when I was here previously, I was out into the supporters groups, so I'll have to get back out there. There's bridges I need to build, and I understand that, okay? But first and foremost, I have to address what happens on the pitch. I've always operated with an open changing room. I, when I came in last time, the clubs bought into the trust, what it was about, um, bought memberships. Those are the things I've done previously. Those, if those things they're doing again, if they've changed from when I was here previously, those are things again, um, but I said for myself, there's bridges that need to be built and I understand that, but first and foremost, I need to affect things on the pitch. Yeah, just on Brian Flynn, Brian Flynn's no longer at the club, um, but we'd like to obviously put on record our thanks for him for leading the team on the interim basis and the work that he's done as assistant manager. He's no longer with us and he's going to be coming in as Dean's full-time assistant manager. Just a bit on Carl Carl, Carl Stain as well. Carl Stain yeah. as well, yeah. And with someone like Andy as well, you all know the club inside out, so it's a case of hitting the ground running, isn't it? Yeah, look, there's still a framework of players that I bought in that I knew, so it's in the changing room, I know players, how I, how they know how I am, I know what they makes them tick and how they operate it, so yeah, it's, as you said, is Andy coming back in, he knows the players, we work with the, with the group, uh, they know what we're about, things have changed, you have to evolve, and that's not just players, football clubs, that's it's, it's been the manager and the coaching staff in the last 18 months to learn a lot. And uh, as I said, I'm not the same person that was here 18 months ago. Um, I'm more experienced and the things I've learned by. Have you had a chance to see many of Wrexham's games this season? And, and if so, is there much that needs to change in your opinion? Are you far away? <clears throat> no, look, I think what I have noticed is it seems football, what football's about, the two 18 yard boxes. If you're not taking your chances in the one, you can see it in the other. The patterns of playing between from 18 to 18. I wouldn't say they've been too far off. People speak about it, not just myself, but other managers or staff, you'll hear them talk about fine margins in football. The football's down to that game. Individual errors, you struggle to affect those. But if there's mistakes through the patterns and people not being in the right slots, that's where you can address things. 
what did you make of the FA Cup draw that took place about half an hour ago? Yeah, I've just found out it's a quick double header for us. Um, look, it's as I said, first and foremost, the most important game of the season for us is tomorrow night, and we'll consider us consider the FA Cup and be leading up towards it. Okay, everyone happy? Thank you very much. Cheers.